The Starlight Lounge presents An Evening with the Progressive Box. The moon, yeah. That's Hugo, tickling the ivories. He just saved by bundling home and auto with Progressive. Gonna finally buy a ring for that gal of yours, Hugo? Send her my condolences. Hi-oh! This next one's for you, too. There's a burglar in my heart. Thank you. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discounts not available in all states or situations. The Internet can be your window to the world or an open door that lets cyber criminals in. Online theft, webcam spying, and identity fraud are all on the rise. But you can stay safe with Kaspersky Lab, the world's most awarded Internet security. Kaspersky protects your money, privacy, identity, and data with technology perfected over 20 years. So keep exploring. Kaspersky Lab will keep you safe online. Learn more at Kaspersky.com. Everybody and welcome again to Nerd to the Third Power, your one-stop shop for all things nerdy and awesome. I'm your host and master of ceremonies, Doctor Gonzo. Cat is taking a break this week, but uh, Skyblaze is here with us. Skyblaze, how are you doing? Praise. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. As a uh, as a member of the Games Press, uh, she is uh, fresh back from we're still recovering, uh, I should say, uh, from our discussion topic uh, for this week, and that's our annual E3 blowout. And joining us... Uh... Hi, it's Jamie, progressive number one, number two employee. Leave a message at the... Hey, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. This is your daily pep talk. I know it's been rough going ever since people found out about your acapella group, Mad Harmony, but you will bounce back. I mean, you're the guy always helping people find coverage options with the Name Your Price tool. It should be you giving me the pep talk. Now get out there, hit that high note, and take Mad Harmony all the way to nationals this year! Sorry, it's pitchy. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. As all, every year for our E3 discussion is Mike the Birdman Dodd from This Week in Geek. Mike, how you doing? What's up, you glorious motherfuckers? <laughs> that's that's what I'm calling every fan now, a glorious motherfucker. <laughs> all right, glad to have you with us uh, for what is going to be a very fun show. So E3 2018 has come and gone. Uh, for, those, for those four of you who don't know what that is, uh, E3 is the biggest industry, video game industry trade show of the year. It is the wildest of the wild parties in the gaming industry. But now it is over. We've put, we've put, a, we've thrown out all the beer bottles, cleaned the various bodily fluids off the walls, hidden the chains. I think I may have said too much. And now we're going to unpack everything uh, that we saw at this E3, what we liked, what we didn't like, and kind of examine uh, how things are going to be going this uh, with this E3. So. Let's just uh, kind of just start with some general thoughts. So what did you guys, what were your guys' general thoughts on this year's E3? What did you guys think of the show in general? Um, I'd say overall, this was a really good E3, especially for Microsoft, because they've been lacking in, in exclusives the last couple of years. So they showed off 50 games, 18 exclusives, which were really, really, really good. Um, one there were two companies I wonder why'd you bother showing up. Uh, Square Enix, why'd you bother? Because they showed almost nothing except for The Quiet Man, um, Babylon Falls, I think was the other game they showed, and the same Kingdom Hearts. And they pretty much every conference had the same Kingdom Hearts thing with slight differences in it, which was really friggin' annoying. Uh, EA, man! I, I, I guess you did your homework the night before the show because it certainly showed. Because Command and Conquer on mobile, fuck yeah. Um, and Nintendo, yeah. you've already won holiday th- this year by sheer amount of exclusives that are coming out. And uh, Microsoft has lost holiday because nobody's buying a console for Forza. And I'm a Microsoft guy, so. Yeah, those are my general thoughts on the show so far. Though a lot of really cool games shown off this year. Definitely the year of the Eastern themed game, like Samurais or Samurais and Ninjas are the thing this year. So uh, I'm okay with this. Okay, Skyblaze, what about you? What did you think of the show? 
I thought overall it was a bit lackluster. Uh, there were some standouts, as uh, Mike was saying, but overall it felt it felt like like a lot of the industry was treading water. Uh, particularly because I, I work in VR, so uh, uh, there wasn't as much VR as we were expecting. But there was a lot of people saying, well, there might be a thing later. Apart from Bethesda, who do all of the things now, apparently. <laughs> okay, well, I really enjoyed this E3, and uh, that's because, you know, this, this E3, much like last year, it was focused on the games. When, me and Brian kind of touched on this. Uh, with last year's E3, we, we, we both think that E3 is really at its best when it's focused on the games and not on, you know, const- and not on, you know, new features for consoles or new peripherals or new, you know, online features, you know, when it's actually focused on the games. And I feel like this year was very much, as last year was very much heavily focused on the games. And I'll tell you what, I got a list of games that I'm really excited about and I'm going to be fucking broke as hell come the holiday season because I've got so many pre-orders in on Amazon right now. Oh man, it's 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 insane. But uh, there's definitely a lot to unpack this year. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started by talking a little bit about uh, each of the companies. So, uh, Mike, what was the what was the first conference up on the on the docket? Uh, the first one that uh, that happened this year was EA Play, and that was on the Saturday this year. They showed off Command and Conquer Mobile. They showed off FIFA as they often do. There was no Need for Speed title. They showed off Anthem. A little bit. They actually brought up some people from Bioware to talk on stage a little bit more in depth. They talked about the new Star Wars game from Respawn, which uh, Vince Sampella, the guys that made Titanfall, are doing it. It's called Jedi Fallen Order, I think was the name of it. or Mm. I think so, something like that. Yeah, that Uh, that caught my eye. Let me tell you, they need that to succeed. After the whole Battlefield 2 fiasco, if that that doesn't work, EA can kiss the Star Wars license goodbye. Well, that's another thing, too. They made some announcements regarding Battlefield 2. They said, yeah, we kind of fucked up. And they came out, and that guy could have could not have been more sheepish. He's like, okay, guys, we got Geonosis and General Grievous and Obi Wan Kenobi. I hope you're happy. We're sorry about the loot box shit. And you could just tell this was an apology uh, presentation without, from without ever saying we're sorry at yeah. any point. No, of course not, because to admit blame is well bad. So, yeah, it was just one of those conferences where EA really didn't have a whole lot to show off. I mean, I guess we we saw, I mean, everybody knew this was going to be the year of Battle Royale. And it kind of was and kind of wasn't. But Battlefield uh, V got a Battle Royale mode with destructible environments. So, hey, it's not like Fortnite's not doing that already. Um, they, it, was so, it was so funny to hear, like, the entire audience just go, oh, whenever a Battle Royale is on. <laughs> I'd say the worst part of the EA conference, and Skyblaze follow me on this one, when they did Command and Conquer on mobile. Oh, and God. they had they had that streamer come out, oh. the, those two guys is like, okay, we got these two guys, they're going really well. They gotta get two out of three of the command points to nuke them. Oh boy. That crowd was dead. You oh, could have yeah. you could have heard a mouse fart in there. That is how bad it was. It and was it was one thing that you do not do you use for a gameplay demonstration is a fucking mobile RTS because the gameplay is boring as shit. And to call it Command and Conquer is kind of feels like an insult, especially after a lot of the, the same fan base has not yet recovered from the whole Dungeon Keeper mobile business. Which, lest we forget, was another EA thing. Yeah, EA... It tends to be kind of, I found, kind of have, have its blinders on with in terms of how it regards the brands under its umbrella. And I realize that what I'm about to say next is going to be kind of, it's going gonna, it's gonna to piss some people off. And it, and it breaks my heart to say being a Command & Conquer fan myself from way back in the day. But Command & Conquer is not an IP that has a whole lot of weight and relevance in this in this gaming generation. Um you know, it just—I I feel like it's. It, what was that? What was that last game that they that they made that just completely and totally tanked? Well, you mean the Command and Conquer RPS that they tried? Uh, sorry, the uh, the FPS that they tried to make, which failed so badly. Yeah, I I really think that was that was kind of the final nail in the coffin. Now, is there a possibility 
for a resurgence in the command in Command and Conquer. Maybe if we can get if, if we can get RTSs in vogue again, but not not as a mobile game. Let me let me sorry let me uh, say a thing that I've noticed from my work in uh, VR and AR. A- uh, augmented reality FPS games are becoming a thing. Because the thing about augmented reality FPS, particularly with the new AR kit thing that uh, Apple introduced, is that you can basically find a flat surface, any flat surface, and put a battlefield down on it, and then control it using gesture control. So we're seeing more and more of these things become reality, and yeah, they're mobile games, but the fact that they're augmented reality gives you an entirely new dimension to it, and a, 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 a physicality to it, which because you've got a small screen you can't usually do with mobile games. And you know, if that was the angle that EA was going with with Command and Conquer, I'd probably be being, be being kinder to them right now, but oh, yeah. I didn't get that impression. No, I get the impression uh, that this is strictly a mobile game and it's just yeah. like who the fuck cares. Yeah, exactly. It, and if they had gone that direction, not only would they be catching a zeitgeist which is just about to peak, they would also have kind of won the fans back by introducing a new element and experimenting with new things, but no they're playing it safe. Because there was also there. there was also some other stuff out of EA that I noticed, which was a lot of people were expecting Skate 4 to get announced, and instead we got Microsoft gave a session, which I'll talk about that a little bit later on. And honestly, this surprised me. There was a rumor I'd heard that we might have saw Mass Effect get a trilogy remaster. That was my prediction. Oh yeah, because the because they really want to try and uh, go back that well after Andromeda. I'm I'm sorry again. This is another thing that breaks my heart. I really think Mass Effect is dead. I I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's it's something that can be brought back after after that train wreck. I think it might be able to, but it's going to take a long time. And I'm also really surprised they didn't show a, a teaser or something. They could have ended their press conference with just the with just the number four done in the Dragon Age font and you would have had that fan fan base go nuts. I'm actually kind of surprised. But Anthem has to sell or Bioware's done. And the thing is Anthem looks like shite. I've heard people I'm, who've I'm, played it and they say it's fun but the universe pre- does not seem interesting to me. Yeah and that presentation did it no favors whatsoever. No. I was just sat there going, so it's Destiny with a jetpack. Yeah, it's Destiny yeah. meets Iron Man. Who yeah, gives a yeah, shit? Yeah, give, give me a reason to care. Anything? Hello? No, I no, mean, oh, never mind. I mean, they made Andromeda look good, and that thing was a steaming pile of rat shit. <laughs> and I don't know Anthem. It's Bioware. This has some of the best creative minds in the industry, and it just looks so dumb. The the problem that I see with Anthem is it is based on what I've seen. It's looking like an an online open world, you know, not quite battle royale, but basically kind of an online PvP sh- PvP action game. And the problem is is that historically, you know, Bioware games have always been very narrative driven. You know, whether it be you know old school D and D style RPGs like Knights of the Old Republic or uh, was it Neverwinter Nights? No, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate was the big one. You know, or action titles like Mass Effect, but they were always very narrative driven. And to try and move into a PvP arena, you know, it's 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 basically untrod territory for Bioware. And I, I and I really think that this is it, it, like you said, Birdman. If this doesn't, if Anthem doesn't sell, I mean, it's pretty much going to kill the studio. And it's not like they've got a whole lot of leg to stand on anymore. Yeah, because uh, Andromeda had failed so spectacularly that their name is now tarnished. And when you say Mass Effect Andromeda, that's the butt of a joke. That uh, It's going to take, like you said, a long time, if ever again, we see a Mass Effect title. And that's depressing, because that's one of the most promising IPs of the last 10 years in terms of science fiction, I think, anyway. I would also like. I would also like to point out uh, one of the other bombshells from EA Play, and they kind of snuck it in there to try and get it under the radar. Uh, the gaming stream, the gaming streaming service, as in oh, pay as a yeah. subscription, otherwise you can't access your games ever. 
Yeah, the whole EA Access Premium, because you have EA Origins right now, which I pay for, which is five bucks a month, I'm okay with. I think their new service is like $11 or something like that, and I'm probably going to cancel my subscription to that. I'm just, I don't use it enough, and I don't know if I care enough to play Battlefield V early. So now the, que- the question I have, is this going to affect any Origin pur- pur- purchases? Because I have, through Origin, I own the Mass Effect trilogy. It's pretty much the only thing I have. Um, so does that mean that when this new service kicks up, I'm now going to have to pay a subscription fee, or I'm never going to be able to own those games, ag- play those games again? That's what they want to do. Whether or not they'll be able to get away with it, I don't know. But that's entirely what they want to do, because they hate the, uh, the used games industry so much. I honestly don't see that... I don't see that. I don't see that taking off. Or if I do, I see it getting struck down very quickly. But that gets into into a legal discussion uh, mm-hmm. that we need not explore here. So that's the EA uh, show. Now, what was the next one on the docket? Microsoft wasn't. It? Uh, Microsoft was on Monday. Sunday. 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 Yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't Ubisoft have a conference on Saturday? No, that was U- that was Monday. Yeah, that was also Monday. So Xbox came out, showed off. Like I said. 50 games, 18 exclusives. Um, I think we... I know We Happy Few. That's not a Microsoft exclusive, but that was one that was showed off a couple years ago, and it got a big presence here. We saw saw a lot more of its gameplay, but it's multi-platform, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but uh, Microsoft bought the studio that made it. Yeah, uh, which they're Canadian, I'm pretty sure. So, go me. Okay, so, so um. it looks like EA was the only conference on, on Saturday, and Sunday yes. it, was, it was Microsoft. It was yeah. first up. It was Microsoft and Bethesda on Sunday. All right, yeah. so let's go into the into the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft on Sunday. Microsoft, Bethesda, and Devolver Digital. Yo, God, Devolver! <laughs> I love those <laughs> wonderful bastards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Microsoft also showed off Halo Infinite, which is it's hard to tell what this game is. They say it's a sequel to Halo Five, but it's not at the same time. I, I cannot tell you what it is. All I know is it's Halo. For some reason, the Master Chief is in his old armor from Halo 1. Okay. Which I I, I, I I kind of applaud because the design that he's had in Halo 4 and, uh, and, and Halo 5 just looks so ugly. I think Halo 3 was probably my favorite armor. But yeah. That was, just, mean, Halo, that was just Halo 2 armor with dents. Yeah. <laughs> It looked cool, though. I like it. Um, but I've always been a big fan of the ODST, if we're talking Halo. But anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, so there was that. They talked about Gears of War Pop, which is a mobile game, which if they turn that into a full retail release on consoles, I think I'd buy that, truthfully. That, and here's that... why. Go ahead. Because you think about it. Funko Pops, it's the next evolution of the Lego franchises. Yeah, that was that was what my, my my immediate thought was when I saw that was like, okay, are they trying to pull a Traveler's Tales Lego X franchise with this? Is that what they're where they're going with this? Because I could see that that concept being you know trying to you know a whole bunch of different franchises and become like you know basically like a you know kind of insert franchise here, but with Lego like like Traveler's Tales does with the Lego series. Yeah, and it's not a bad idea either. They also showed off another game that's got my attention. It was Gears of War Tactics, but it looks like XCOM meets Gears of War. That looks interesting. So it's basically their version of XCOM, and that's pretty cool. They also showed off Gears of War 5, and I think they dated it for next year. Which I gotta say, that's a really quick friggin' turnaround, yet they didn't date Halo. Um, they also showed up. I'm trying to remember what else they showed up. Skyblaze, help, help, help me out here. Um, was uh, the new Devil May Cry game? In that yes, 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 that was also shown up. So Devil May Cry 5 from Capcom. Which actually looks good. It looks cool. I, I'm not. I'm still not a huge fan of the new Dante design, but you know what? I'm old, get off my lawn. Yeah, um, so, so am I. And, uh... Uh, but on the other hand, they have Johnny Young Bosch as the voice of Nero. So, yeah. So now, is this. I'm signed is, up for that. So now, yeah. I, have to, I have to ask for, for, for my own clarification is this a sequel to the original Devil May Cry series, or is this leaping off the remake that was on the Xbox 360 a few years ago? We don't fucking know. <laughs> it seems to be both. They seem to be having their fucking cake and eating it. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, we also saw more on Sea of Thieves, but we already knew this was coming. They're the the two major expansions, which are coming out in the summer and in the fall, which hopefully that'll do something for that game because Sea of Thieves isn't bad, but it's not the greatest thing on the planet either, which is kind of kind of sad because I've I've I got a friend of mine. He runs a YouTube channel, uh, Mister Mister Christopher. And he's a huge fan of it. And Sea of Thieves is fun. I just don't think the player base is going to come back to that game. But I'm glad Microsoft gave them at least a couple seconds to even talk about it during their like E3 presentation. I'm actually trying to pull up um, what was shown at uh, E3 for Microsoft. Because E3 just blends together after a while. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it really, really does. Just like, geez, guys. like I've been talking so much about... Um, about E3, it's kind of nuts. One thing I can talk about, though, is what was shown right at the end, and that's Cyberpunk 2077. Yes. Oh my god, that has, that, that's that got me excited. And th- I, that- I've played the tabletop for this, and I like that universe. So let's hope they do it justice. I think they will, because CD Projekt Red did a fantastic job with The Witcher. The last time we saw this game was, I think, five years ago, in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Everybody thought it was dead. Yeah, but no, they just took their time after The Witcher, Blood and Wine. There's Mm. been a couple of retools with it. There's actually an interview up at Kotaku, I think, where they talk about the development cycle for it. But people have played this behind closed doors at E3 for about an hour. It's a first-person RPG, so very similar to probably, like, Skyrim, for example. Um, but they say, if you like The Witcher, if you like Fallout, you'll really dig this. I'm just getting into the, the, uh, tabletop game now, Cyberpunk 2020. Mm. I'm really not, I'm guessing we're not going to see this game before 2020. If they're smart, <laughs> they will, they will release this game in 2020 to do brand synergy. Thank you, large truck. Um, and you'll have just a fantastic branding for it. I wouldn't surprise me if we get a new edition of the role-playing game when this comes out, actually. But that's a pie-in-the-sky wish right yeah. there. Yeah, so there hasn't been a new edition for quite a while. Uh, no, was not since I was in high school. Yeah. Uh, who was it? Was it Microsoft who showed the Beyond Good and Evil 2 trailer? Uh, no, that was Ubisoft's conference. That's how they launched it. That's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, As they you also... said, it all starts blurring together. Although they did show Battletoads, but they showed nothing about it. Like, Battletoads! Yeah. This because, exists! Yeah, it's it's a thing. Why not? That... That I'm, oh. I'm really excited about because I'm I'm a, I'm a Battletoads fan from way back. I'm one of the I'm one of the I'm one of those proud few who can say that he's actually beaten the original Battletoads. Liar! Nope. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten past the Turbo Tunnel once. So, um, but yeah, I was I was really excited to see that, and I you know it it it's it's one of those things that I think it, it, that I think Rare really needs is a, a, a good shot in the arm of interest like that because they've been kind of languishing for a few years. They had kind of a bit of a boost with Killer Instinct. Um, but nothing really spectacular has uh, has been coming out from them for a wh- for a while, which is a damn shame because they're they're a great studio, and it's, it, it'll be great to see them get a shot in the arm with Battletoads. I was kind of hoping there'd be a season three announcement for like Killer Instinct, but I guess that was a pie in the sky wish. One thing that surprised me uh, in in some ways is there's more DLC coming for Cuphead. Yes, that makes me so happy. The last delicious course, which is fantastic, because Cuphead needs to be a franchise they have to invest in. If you yes. can keep that franchise going, you have something there. I think I'm the only person in the world who has ever played video games who doesn't really care about Cuphead. <laughs> I can't beat it for shit, but I love the art style. I, 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 it looks great, it's just I don't enjoy pain. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> it's the same reason I don't play Dark Souls. And and yet you're a Kingdom Hearts fan. What's that got to do with anything? I can I'm, at least play that and beat the game. I'm dumb. To, it's a different kind of pain, though. <laughs> so, but we'll get to that when we get into the Square Enix show. I want to get moving into the Bethesda conference, and I want to get started off with a thing that had had me need some twelve thirty time immediately, and that's Doom Eternal. Oh my God, the sound I made when I saw that trailer was not human. I am so excited for that. Doom 2016 
was one of my top five ga- favorite games of 2016. And the fact that it's getting a sequel, oh my god, it's just ew, words cannot describe. I was surprised that it's coming out so soon. Like, yeah, the fact that we're already getting it announced two years afterwards, wow. Yeah, and especially considering that they also did Doom VFR earlier this year. Yeah, like, honestly, Bethesda announced a lot of really good things well, during its well, before, conference. Before we, before, we, before, we, before we move on, I want to I kind of touch on, what, on, on your surprise they're announcing it and the fact it's coming so soon after Doom VFR. I think Bethesda realizes that Doom 2016 has really energized the fan base, and so that's the reason why they're 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 turning out Eternal so soon is they want to keep the excitement going for this uh, as long and as hard as they can, and that's why they're 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 putting the announcement out so soon after doing VFR, just just to keep people in to keep people invested. And I honestly think it's kind of brilliant that they kind of space things out that way. Oh sure, um, we'll strike while the iron is hot and everything. I'm just concerned that they must be like chaining developers to their desks like please sir can i go home i haven't seen my family in four months <laughs> no crunch time you keep programming um yeah another thing that they announced was there's a new uh, game coming for wolfenstein the young blood which is yeah, a co-op uh, experience and there's the uh cyber pilot the vr mech pilot one uh starlight i think it's called isn't it no cyber pilot wolfenstein yes. cyber pilot oh so Wolf- okay, that I didn't know about. Okay, yeah, you, you have uh, my you have my attention. Let me find it on uh, on the site I work for, so we can get that lovely, lovely advert. Yeah, you uh, pilot Nazi robots, so that's a thing. Yeah, and turn them against their masters. <laughs> I'm so, not hearing anything I don't like so far. <laughs> they, they, Which- it, was gr- it was great that, that line they said during the the conference. It's like so because we are trying to spread our net message of fuck Nazis to every conceivable platform. I'm like, yes, that was the quote of E3. I thought, I thought that was fantastic. Um, another thing that um, I think they really knocked it out of the park with. Okay, they do mobile games, but they talked about the Elder Scrolls card game. I'm surprised that's still getting as much support as it is. Mm-hmm. They're still talking about Fallout Shelter, which is now available on the Switch. Why? So, why not? It's a fantastic game. My, it really my hus- is. My husband takes it to work with him, so he can play it in between calls. And they also announced Fall or not Fallout, uh, Elder Scrolls Blades, Blades. which mm-hmm. is looking like an interesting experience. And Bethesda seems to support their mobile games better than any other developer. I think in terms of. Here's a rich universe. Here's an experience that's mobile, but fits that universe. Blades has my attention. Maybe I'll actually check it out. Maybe I'll actually check out the card game for the Elder Scrolls as well, too. So that's something I was actually genuinely surprised. And they brought out their community managers to come out and talk about this. One thing Bethesda did, though, that did not resonate with me at all which I thought this was a terrible misstep on on their behalf, because that crowd did not know what to fucking do with this one, is they talked about Rage 2, but they started it with Andrew WK. Yeah. I like Andrew WK. Me too. But that crowd... Yeah, but that crowd was like, who the fuck is this guy? (laughs) They didn't know what what to do. Considering that the the crowd who was in there, most of the ones you saw were the dudes in suits who were there for work. Who are like, uh... <laughs> My kids listen to this loud, loud, obnoxious music. Who's this guy? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, th- actually, there's a great shot of a guy who looks like he's running away from Satan. If you watch that <laughs> press conference again, there's a guy running up those stairs. As soon as Andrew WK takes the stage, he's like, fuck this, I'm out. And he runs flat out. It's ridiculous. Um, but they talked about Rage 2... And I don't care. Why I, does Rage 2 exist? I, I, I think that's a sentiment that's shared by most of the gaming community, because I've not heard anybody really talking about Rage 2. Uh, and it really kind of baffles me that, they are, that they're going back to that well, because I don't... I mean, I'm thinking back on the first Rage, which I've played. It's sold okay, mecha- I think. Mecha- mechanically, it's, it's a decent game, but it's very paint by numbers, which is not something you expect from Bethesda. It's I, 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 would, I would describe I, I, it as I am, borderline about li- the humor. I, I am literally trying to remember the name of any character. I think there's a guy named Carter. I think, and oh, they 
This is one thing I remember. The only reason Rage 2, I even remember this, is because in the collector's edition, for $120, you can get Andrew WK's voice in that severed talking head. That's a real thing. You can buy that. You can get Sammy the Gurgling Mutant, or whatever the hell it's called, on your wall, and Andrew WK will talk to you. Okay. Okay. Kind of interested. Just from a pure weirdness point of just from a pure weirdness point of view, but yeah, this game. The only thing I remember about Raid is that stupid friggin' boomerang thing. I don't remember that. The only, the only thing I remember is is just I don't know. Like I said, it was, it was very paint by numbers. Again, it was Borderlands without the humor. That's that's what it was to me. Um, but moving moving past Rage Two, uh, I'll tell you the other thing that really put a put a, a taser to my spine was uh, the fact that they finally announced that they're at least working on Elder Scrolls 6. We don't know where it's going to be or what it's going to have, but just the fact that they're working on it uh, got me excited. Uh, and then my excitement was immediately tempered with uh, Fallout 76. I'm like, oh god, here we go. I'm excited for this game. I'm ludicrously excited. The second they announced the Power Armor Edition, I pre-ordered it. But there are no quest-giving NPCs the Overseer will occasionally give you missions. Everything is developed via holotape, note, or things you find in the world. Anybody you see in the world is a player. They Which, haven't announced how they're going to prevent griefing yet. I was going to say, the major concern I have seen from everybody I know who's a Fallout fan is great that we can create our own world and explore it and everything. How do we stop people picking over our sandcastle? And there has been no answer. And as a Fallout, as, as someone who's played Fallout from all the way from the first game way back in the '90s, I can tell you the reason why people play Fallout is to play into is to get into an already developed world and explore, you know, the story, the narrative, the world, the characters, the civilizations. And it feels like Fallout '76 is discarding all of that to be a more flavorful version of Player Unknown Battlegrounds. That's really or what it rust. looks like to me. Yeah, it feels more like Rust or Ark Survival. Um, and I'm not a huge fan that there is no huge overarching narrative. I mean, one great meme that's making the rounds on Facebook right now is Fallout 3, find your father. Fallout 4, find your son. Fallout 76, take uh, destroy Pussy Slayer Shack 69 that he spent six hours building with a nuke. And I and I think I'd have I, I think I'd be a little less and a, a little less hostile to Fallout seventy six if I knew that Bethesda was also working on the next single player Fallout and that's really irritating me is because I've been hearing so many rumors going around about what the next main Fallout game is going to be I've heard that it, it might be New Orleans I've heard that it might be New Vegas too which please God if you love me let that be um, which but, I'm surprised like, there I've wasn't not, a re- oh sorry Billy but, go but ahead. I've not heard you know we've not heard anything from Bethesda about working on them working on the next Fallout game which to be fair makes sense Bethesda is not a company that likes to jump the gun and announce some and 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 you know throw out a sequel one or two years after they've put out a game they like to let their games kind of sit and and stew for a while and devote you know actual real time and effort into differentiating the sequel from the previous installment so i get why we didn't hear anything about a new single player fallout but i think i feel like in light of the fallout 76 announcement you know maybe the people who are into fallout as a single player experience might be feeling a little bit forgotten especially with, want... the, with, the, with the fad of, of player of battle royale games nowadays it's also with the fad of games as service uh you know you you they basically set up a server give you a login it's your own problem create your own game yeah it means yeah. that they Games developers can be, and especially publishers, can be really, really lazy about the games that they're creating and still milk money month after month after month off people. Yeah. And that idea pisses me off. But anyway, you're about to say something, Mike? I was about to say, um, now, I think Bethesda, if they do anything right, is they let their games be handled by the modding community. Now, they've said their Fallout 76 will be moddable, just not at launch. You will see single-player content. You will see quests and everything developed by NPCs, but you will not see it provided by them after a while. And they're even talking about being able the ability to play offline, so to speak, or create private servers with mods and everything. 
So don't give up hope on Fallout 76 just yet. I'm hoping it'll be good. I'm hoping when I log in on November or something, it'll be just the experience that I want it to be. I hope I don't get griefed. I hope there'll be more talking about that when they do the beta, which is getting released on Xbox One first, and then the other consoles uh, at a later date. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. Um, one other thing that came out of the Bethesda press conference, which this doesn't have my attention really, is they announced a new IP, which has been rumored for so long, Starfield. Don't know anything about it. It happens in space. That's all I can tell you. The, the rumor I'm hearing is that it's, 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 it's going to be Elder Scrolls in space, which, interesting concept... Want to see how it? Want to see more about how it's developed? Because I can, I can very easily see this becoming the next No Man's Sky. Yeah, basically huge promises, but not delivered, which terrifies me. Because Bethesda, you've done some really fantastic things. Hell, I was surprised they able they announced shit for Prey and made it sound interesting. Um, so they've got a lot to live up to, but they had a lot of. I think a lot of the community responses, people were very welcoming to almost all their announcements. I think they had the most community-friendly press conference of the entire show. People were outside of Nintendo, but uh, of the third-party publishers, I think they did the best. Okay. So I guess that pretty much wraps up Bethesda, so now moving into Monday, next up was the uh, Square Enix conference. Why'd they bother uh, showing up? It's like, we show a video. Bye! Yeah. <laughs> hey guys. What the fuck got... was that? <laughs> it's like they had somebody, they had some intern like, "Hey man, do you want to keep your job?" Yeah. "Do you like money?" Yeah. "You got 20 minutes?" Yeah. "Can you throw together an E3 presentation?" No. "We'll do it anyway because that's what we got." Now, the uh, the big thing co- that came out of the Square Enix uh conference was of course Kingdom Hearts, the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. Um but there's something that I I I have to talk about because it's been bugging me ever since I've seen that trailer. And is it just me, or was the audio on that trailer balanced horribly? Oh, it was garbage. I guarantee you that was recorded a week beforehand. Yep. Like uh, I'm, the, the 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 audio was clearly unfinished. Like I I I'm I'm I'm, I'm, li- I'm watching this trailer. And I'm listening to the voices and in, in, in the music, and the whole time I'm thinking, you know, I taught myself from scratch how to edit a podcast. I have no professional training in audio whatsoever. And I'm pretty sure I could have mixed this trailer better than these guys could have. Uh, see also the audio for the entire Sony presentation. Oh, we'll get to that. Oh. <laughs> so, but there was one uh, shining shining glimmer in uh, the Square Enix conference uh, the, the Kingdom Hearts trailer, and that's we finally have a release date. Yes. And it's yeah. January Next of 2019. After they promised us after they swore on Holy Bible that it would be out in 2018. So... They only missed Nomura, it by 29 days. That's not terrible. I, I still want Nomura's head. That was that was, that was was my vow, that if it didn't come out this year, I'd have Tetsuya Nomura's head on a platter, so I want my head. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was a presentation. I mean, they showed off Babylon's Fall, okay, cool, whatever, The Quiet Man, which looks really weird um and they showed off kingdom hearts 3 which mostly every time they showed this trailer they're focusing on frozen and pixar properties but then we randomly saw uh pirates of the caribbean during the sony presentation Mm -hmm. and i gotta Um, say that looks amazing it does look cool i i swear to god i thought it was an assassin's creed game at first yeah this is this is what happens when uh you give artists access to uh talented artists access to the unreal 4 engine I'd like to know if that was actually Johnny Depp doing the voice. It wasn't. It's a sound like. Oh, he sounded damn close, though. He's pretty. He's very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will say it got me interested for Kingdom Hearts 3. And that's something I never thought I'd say. Because the Kingdom Hearts series has looked interesting to me, but not enough to invest in it. Kingdom Hearts 3, you know what? Maybe I'll throw down the money to get all three games because there is a PlayStation 4 bundle you can get for like yeah. a, a hundred bucks. You know what? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. It's, it's. Uh, I will say, I, I hold up my hands. I am completely biased. I have, I had a Keyblade prop made. I am a huge Kingdom Hearts nerd. It's still worth playing, even it has. 
problems, many problems, especially narratively, but it's they're huge fun to play. Um, other than that, uh, Square Enix also showed off Hitman 2. Yes! Which does look cool. Oh, which does look really cool. Dude. Oh, yeah. Hitman 2, that makes you so happy. So happy. And the, and the, the, the part that made, that made me happiest was that it's not following the episodic release that Hitman that Hitman 2016 had, which that was, you know, that was great. The, the, reason, the reason why I, 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 I love that is I got into Hitman 2016 after the episodic cycle had been done, so I got the whole game in one go. I guarantee you that if I had to actually sit through the monthly release schedule, I would not make it. So the fact that the, it's all coming out in one go is uh, is just amazing to me, and I cannot wait because Hitman 1 ended on such a cliffhanger. There's so many questions that need to be answered, and I can't wait to see what uh, what 47 gets up to in the next game. I just want to kill someone as Toucan Sam with a fish. That's what got my attention. <laughs> I can dress no. up in a stupid costume and kill people with fish. I, I, I can't help but imagine the fish slapping dance from Monty Python now. Thank you so much for that mental image. <laughs> Um, I guess moving on to the next conference, we saw Bethesda. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. a glaring absence from the Square Enix presentation. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where the fuck was Final Fantasy VII remake? Square, Square Enix. Hello. And you Where know the fuck is it? And you know what's really funny? If you look on Amazon, there's they're actually offering pre-orders on the FF Seven remake. Yeah, they are. I have one. <laughs> So the fact that they're not talking about it at all, I think, is, word, is very word worrying it, to me. Word has it that the engine they were using for it didn't work. Everything has fallen apart. They've had to basically go back to bare metal and start again from day one. Ooh, and I bet John Romero's ears are burning right now. Final Fantasy mm. VII Remake will not be available on this console generation. You can mark my words here. You're, you're, you're putting two dollars on Sun Up on that, huh? Absolutely, it will not be out on PS4 or Xbox One. No way in hell. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, like, I, like, I, I, like I, I mentioned, would, I, I would cry. I would not be surprised, but I would cry. It's like, it's like I said to you before we started the show, Mike. Yeah, I've got a pre-order down, but I'm not going to believe it until it arrives at my door. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those games. It's going to turn into the next Duke Nukem Forever. If it happens, I'll be goddamn surprised. Yeah, I, I would be. I think it's fair to say it already has. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the next press conference that happened was Ubisoft's, and these guys put on a pretty good show this year. That dance number, goddamn, if that wasn't catchy. They always start with their just dance, and you know what? The game may be simple and stupid as hell, but if they don't go all in on it. It's, it's the kind of presentation that genuinely makes you feel good. And what I mean by that is they brought the energy. They showed off Just Dance. Then they followed up with Trials Fusion where the guy came out on the... Or Trials Title or something like that. Trials something. Um, he comes out on the motorbike and falls flat on his face. And still keeps going with the energy. They even brought out a really small YouTuber. He only has like 8,000 or 9,000 subscribers to get people to learn how to play Trials. He's like, the game comes out in February. Go check out this YouTuber. He'll teach you how to play. We genuinely want you involved. It was and quite nice that they, they didn't try and gloss over the what most people would consider to be the smaller entries that they have. They went all in with it and gave it the same status as their huge entries. I thought that was quite nice. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. Another thing that surprised me is they showed off a documentary for Rainbow Six Siege. And they talked about how many seasons it's had, how many how it's affected the community. They brought up the community manager for Rainbow Six, and he genuinely... Ubisoft cares. I mean, me and Ubisoft, total disclaimer, have a pretty friendly relationship. Um, but one thing I've noticed with them is when they involve their community people, they get the right people at the right places, where they're genuinely engaging with players or engaging with the community members to say, what do you like? What don't you like? What can we do to make it better? The fact that they made a documentary and made it a part of their E3 presentation shows they care. And that's something you can't say about a lot of third-party publishers, that they're willing to put money, time, and effort into putting community... Maybe Bethesda 
you you could say that. Like Bethesda started off their presentation with fire alarms. Sorry, guys. Um, they started things off talking about the company that's based in Bethesda, Maryland. Ubisoft said, "Hey, here's nine or ten players from our community. Let's follow them as they become competitive Rainbow Six players." That was cool to me. I was genuinely impressed by that. I certainly th- think that the community managers, as a general rule, do not get enough credit because they do a really, really hard job. They so. do because they put up with abuse from people, but they also get yeah. praised too. When when a community manager does their job right, nobody notices, but the community's happy. When a community manager does their job wrong, we know who you are. Yeah. And we will find you. Uh, another thing they showed off, which well, this was a huge deal too, they showed off Starlink. This is a game that's being developed by Ubisoft Toronto. I didn't know if it was ever going to come out. They showed off a full trailer, and then they pulled the rug out from under me. Star Fox, are you ready? And Star Fox came out. And everyone went, wait, what the fuck? Which, which conference am I watching? <laughs> I yelled at my screen, and I'm not going to hide this. Take my money now. <laughs> and oh my god I was so excited and the fact that the Starlink toys that attach to your controller for the, for, the, for the Nintendo Switch version it's an R-Wing you've got my money thank you yeah that's uh, that's 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 definitely uh, going onto my pre-orders list uh, also yeah Ubisoft and Nintendo seem to have become uh, like that you know they, they proposed and married in a, in a lovely ceremony yeah, uh, like, did you see how happy Miyamoto was when he got his little R-Wing present? Yeah, that's what I mean. It was, like, it was a lovely ceremony, attended by all of the attenders of E3. I mean, that man is nothing but sunshine and smiles. I cannot picture Miyamoto sad, because that guy looks like he's genuinely into everything that he does. And then they had that musical number again with Mario Rabbids and Donkey Kong. And it was really energetic. Once again, the crowd got into it. Ubisoft knows how to put on a show. And that was for DLC. Mm. Holy shit. Um, They also talked about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which gives you a choice of a male character or a female character. You can play as gay as you want, which I think is great. Yes. Uh, So all for representation. And it just, it looks like a genuinely cool Assassin's Creed game. I'm friggin' all in for this, man. It looks it awesome. Looks, it looks beautiful as well, um, especially with all the architecture and stuff. I mean, they did a really good job of that with, in Origins. And they seem to have kind of taken the stuff that worked in Origins and just done more of that. I can live with that. It's fine by me. I like the fact that people can hunt you down as mercenaries. I think that's such a badass part of, of it, too. Um, one big thing, I forgot to mention this, and Billy will probably get mad at me. Um, this press conference started off on a really, really high note outside of the musical number. We saw Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yep. A longer trailer. A yep. more meaty trailer. And... They even brought out jo- Joseph Gordon-Levitt from uh, the studio that he runs and says, hey, if you want to contribute music and artwork to this game, you can do that. And if you do, you get paid. Which I've seen a lot of mixed reactions to. There are some people who are all in favor of this, and then there are other people who are kind of screaming to the ceiling that, like, no, that Ubisoft shouldn't be... Uh, basically crowdsourcing uh, labor from, uh, from yeah, your fans for this. Yeah, they're basically asking the fan base to do spec work for them and then they get to pick who get, who they pay. Uh, that feels dodgy to me. I, 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 my, I'm withholding judge until I hear more about how it works. Because uh, again, this like you know, like you mentioned, Dodd, this is just an initial announcement, but, get, but the way they put it, it's mm. something that can, it, it, it Depending on it, it, all depends on the execution, and that's really what we need to hear about is how they're actually going to execute this plan. Yeah, because uh, right now, it based on what they on what they said, it sounds like an Indiegogo gone wrong. I think it has the potential to do a lot of good, give people a lot of exposure, but it also has the potential to go sideways real fast. Oh yeah. yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't, because I like Joseph Gordon Levitt. I don't think he's a douchebag, so. Hopefully his company knows what they're doing. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. 
All right. So that's that was the Ubisoft conference. So uh, next up was the the PC gaming show. Oh God. So, is that is this... that where the lion's share of your work was, Skyblaze? No, it was just really fucking boring. <laughs> it is every year. It's a dumpster fire every year. <sighs> it was th- there were like three fucking battle royale things, and I was like, please fucking kill me. The only thing that looked interesting out, out of the PC show was that Call of Cthulhu esque game, The Sunken City, or something. Yeah, that, that, that looked, looked kind cool. of interesting. There's another game too. Um, I think it was called. Neo Cab, it's some indie title. That looked pretty cool to me. And the Walking Dead game, but I don't know whether it's licensed by Walking Dead or they just describe it as the Walking Dead slash zombie thing. Um, there was a new trailer for the Telltale game, which comes out in August, so that's okay. But other than that, the PC gaming show, whoever that host is, I know he's a big time Twitch streamer. Do not let him host things ever again, please. He was so annoying. Holy shit. I thought Mr. Caffeine was a drink of friggin' sewage. This guy. This fucking guy. (laughs) Just an hour and a half of irritation in your ear. All right. So I guess there's not really a whole lot to talk in the PC gaming show. So uh, let's move on to the Sony conference. And I've got to say, the star of this show for me was the Resident Evil 2. It wasn't something that was really shown at the uh, at the conference, but it was something that was on the on the play floor, and that was the demo for Resident Evil 2, which you can find gameplay footage of all over YouTube right now. And can I say I am this is this was the top outside of what, you know, we'll get into in the Nintendo conference. This was the top game for me. This was my number 2 uh, top game of E3 2018 was Resident I, Evil 2. I'm I, so excited for this. I was really pissed off about the Resident Evil 2 remake because uh, we'd heard from sources months ago that the Resident Evil 2 remake was going to be in VR. And then uh, apparently it's not because it's going to be in third person which doesn't really work very well with VR. And there was like, we had like three articles ready, it was going to be our big thing for Monday and get all that traffic in and nope. Fuck you! I'm well, I, really I, excited for this. I, I On that VR note, if, I wouldn't be surprised if they came out down the line with a version for VR because uh, that's pretty much what they did with Resident Evil Seven, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say right now that that's not in the cards. I I, I would not I, given the history and what happened with Resident Evil Seven, I can e- very easily see Capcom coming out with a Resident Evil Two VR version down the line. Give it time; it'll happen. Yeah. Um, Sony opened with The Last of Us Two. They actually had the guy from the, who composed the main theme, Gustavo, and I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, come out and play the melody from The Last of Us, which was really great. Although the presentation for Sony was really weird. They wanted you to experience the game. So they had them start out in this huge tent slash church area. They showed a gameplay demo and trailer from The Last of Us Part Two, which was was really great. And then there was all this dead air and and those poor presenters desperately trying to fill space as they move people around. Poor, poor guys. They were literally like, okay, guys, we got to fill another five minutes. And they're like, shit. Um, the Last of Us 2 is probably the game I'm the most looking forward to outside of Resident Evil this year. Um, I'm surprised it wasn't dated. Um, but then again, that's a game I'll, I'll be happy when it's done. And I want it done right. Um, I also saw an article on Kotaku again. Or it was either Kotaku or, or uh, Polygon talking about how the kiss between Ellie and her girlfriend was one of the most impressive technical things they'd ever seen. It was beautifully It was great looking. It looked like it came out of a movie. Mm. The Last of Us franchise is such an important franchise for Sony that that's a game that'll move systems. Yeah, that's the that's that's that that's a comp, that, that's one of those things I feel like going back to what you said about your surprise they didn't date it. I feel like that's The Last of Us is one of those games they don't need to date because they know it's going to sell hot no matter when it comes out. Yeah. I imagine it'll probably get dated. We won't see it next year. They'll date it next year. I, I imagine that might be Sony's holiday game next September. That's what I'm going to call right now. That'll be their big holiday title. Um, they also showed off some cool ghost game, Ghost 
it's I can't print I can't Ghost remember. Of Tsushima? That's it. That the, looked friggin' awesome. Yeah, when it was uh, that was that another that was another samurai type thing, wasn't it? I yeah, they else. showed off another one during the Xbox conference that was called it was some ninja game, but it was like Dark Souls but with ninjas. This mm. one looks a little more up my alley. Um, but yeah, Ghost of Sh- Shishima looks Su- fucking Tsushima. Su- Tsushima, yeah, yeah, looks amazing. Looks beautiful. Looks great on a technical level. The gameplay looks neat, and I'm hoping it doesn't suck. I really am. Um, however, though, that being said, let's talk about the presentation. A lot of people were pissy about this one. There are two sides to this. Um, when Sony was moving people over between uh, the, the conferences, we talked about those those presenters that had to fill a lot of time. Mm-hmm. That sucked. When they started the ghost presentation, they brought out this guy who was playing a Japanese wood instrument. And people were shouting cultural appropriation at, at this dude. I actually had to do a, a little bit of research into this. Turns out that guy is a world-class master at his instrument. I had no clue, so I felt yeah, like a total he's, jackass. He's, he's like one of three people in the entire world who has mastered this instrument. Yeah. Well, that's, was... that's, that's getting into, 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 Twitter verse, into Twitter controversy, which is not something we cover on this show. But, yeah, but yeah, you know no, what? But I'm willing let me to admit you, when I, I'm wrong. But let me tell you, that performance that he gave, oh my God, I was moved to tears. Like the, his 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 mastery of that flute, like it, it was, it's one of those beautiful things I've ever heard in my life. The problem, though, is the performance was good, but the audio was crap. Yeah, because you could hear stage directions, you could hear hot mics the entire mm-hmm. time. That guy's performance, he got ripped off. He that performance should have been better. For quite a lot of it. Um... I don't know if somebody had left a cable unplugged or something, but a, there was a channel missing. It sounded hollow. It. Yeah, because there was a channel missing. So, that poor guy, once again, I apologize for being a jerk, but I apologize to you on behalf of the gaming community because that performance should have been amazing and you got marred by technical glitches. Mm. The performance from Sony got better, but you could hear hot mics the whole time. Even when they showed off Spider-Man, you could hear people talking backstage going, okay, you come out now, you go stage left. And you know what the irony of this, of all this is? Sony has a history of being an audio engineering company. Yep, yeah. I, said that, I said that on Twitter at the time. It's like, Sony, you have got some of the best minds in audio under your umbrella. What the hell is this? <laughs> I guess they must have hired a new company to put together their presentation this year because Sony's games they showed off The Last of Us, Resident Evil 2 Ghost, um, what else Sp- am I Spider-Man looked Spider-Man. awesome the games were A+, the presentation was a C mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm putting $2 on Sun Up, Spider-Man is going to be this generation's Arkham series oh, I for can sure. live with that that, that the, 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 the Spider- this new Spider-Man game is going to do for Marvel what the, what the Arkham trilogy did for DC. I'm calling it now. Good. Excellent. <laughs> yep, honestly, that's a really uh, good prediction. Considering that I'm more of a Marvel than a DC anyway, I can entirely live with this. Although... Uh, I, I, I quite liked the uh, Spider-Man Shadow Dimension and whatever the other one was on the PS3. Web of Shadows? Yeah, I quite liked those. They were flawed, but they were still quite fun. The, the the consensus I'm hearing about this new one is that it's going to it's it's going to be the best Spider-Man game since Spider-Man Two on the GameCube and PS2. Which wow, yeah, that's quite considering the how highly cons, con, yeah considering how how well received those games were. Mm. You know what though, I will go out on a limb and I will I have a guilty pleasure. You know those two amazing Spider-Man games that come out for the new movies. Oh dear, I kind of like them. I I like I like the web slinging anyway and some of the fighting but that's neither here nor there although there was a rumor we were going to see Rocksteady Superman here and we did yeah we, we heard that as well and then it didn't happen there was also a rumor flying around that uh, Spider-Man was going to get a VR mode and that didn't happen either oh god I, yeah I that that's when I can live without ha- I'm a, I get motion sickness already and having to do web swinging VR yeah no 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 as bueno well, it, it was. It's already been done. In the there was a short VR experience to on the PlayStation VR to promote Spider-Man: Homecoming, and that was kind of cool. 
awkward because it was kind of early on, but it was still kind of cool. I can just imagine just, okay, watching Spidey fight, you know how he ducks under dudes and does all the backflips? Mm. That in VR would be vomit-inducing. The fight scenes alone. But web swinging in VR might be kind of fun. Um, i trying to think, what else did Sony show off? I guess, uh, no, that's pretty much about it. All right, so then I guess that brings us to uh, the last conference. This is one that I'm going to go up in 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 depth because this is the one that I actually watched as it was happening. Uh, all, right. all the others I had to work for, so uh, I had to see them after the fact. But that's the Nintendo conference, and I'm going to echo something. I'm, I'm going to echo something that you said uh, earlier in the show, and that's Nintendo has officially won the holiday this year. Yep, just, they... with, just with Smash Brothers Ultimate. That that's it. That's you know, we, there, there's a lot of criticism that they didn't have a whole lot outside of Smash. I say they didn't need anything else but Smash. That was it. That was the smoking gun of the show this year. Absolutely, because Nintendo has a popular series coming out around holiday. Actually, it's got two coming out around holiday. It has Smash Brothers, and it's got Pokemon. The Switch hardware will become hard to find again around holiday this year. And unless you've got your pre-orders in now for GameCube controllers or Pokemon controllers, you're not getting it. Yeah, and won. and something that I want to I want to I want to touch on is sort of the tone that Nintendo took with its Smash Brothers presentation. It very much felt like they were speaking not you know to the industry as a whole, but very directly towards the fans, talking about you know all these characters that are gonna be coming back. Here are some tweaks that we're going to be making. Here's here you know here are some costumes that we're going to be adding. You're going to be able to do this. You're going to be able to do that. We're bringing in this stuff that you've loved from the past. It really felt like they were speaking directly to the Smash Brothers fans and not to like an industry trade show. And I feel like that was a really, you know, a really great thing on their part Um, because it it felt in a way, I guess, a little more personal, if that makes any sense, uh, than a lot of the other presentations did. I don't know, was it, I the only one who really noticed that? It felt like they were talking to the fighting game community. And there were two examples of this. They were talking with uh, Sakurai, and they mentioned, oh yeah, and we're bringing back dash cancels. We're bringing back other mechanics and games that haven't been seen since Melee. That was aimed at the fighting game community. And I think Smash Brothers Ultimate, maybe you'll see Nintendo. I doubt it, but it's possible. Maybe you'll see Nintendo enter the eSports scene officially with Smash because they put a lot of technical details into that game that unless you're a fighting game nerd talking about invincibility frames, startup, etc., etc., you're not going to give one shit about. Yay, Snake's back. Yay, we're getting Wolf, who randomly poses like Yamcha from Dragon Ball Z, in case you didn't notice. Um, But... They talked about so much technical detail. You're right. They spoke to the fans. This was a Nintendo E3 for people who love the Smash series. Everything else was an afterthought, really. But they've won Holiday, without and, a doubt. And again, going back to the criticism that they, they didn't have much besides Smash, and this is something that uh, Skyblaze, you and I will get into more in detail when we do our Switch one year later retrospective. Uh, mm-hmm. Nintendo has, for a long time because they've been doing their directs, they, they, for the last few years, seem to have been putting less and less emphasis on E3 because they know that they can release their information as it comes out over the course of the year in the directs. So I think that the reason why we didn't see a whole lot from Nintendo outside of Smash was because they, they, they didn't want to blow their load all in one show. They're kind of, you know, they're, they're spreading themselves out over the directs over the course of the year. And I'm okay with that. You know, it's always a very nerve-wracking experience as E3 comes up because you don't really know what's going to show. You, you, you're you getting really excited. You're getting kind of disappointed that maybe you, you haven't heard about anything yet. But whereas Nintendo, you know that if you don't hear about something, you know, with this Direct or with this show, you got another one coming in a couple months that you might get more information in. They did announce some more stuff, uh, more DLC stuff for uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Which I am also awesome. really excited about. Yep. And The World Ends With You on the Switch, which I haven't played it and I would really like to, so that would be open. I'm interested in that one, and I'm not an an RPG kind of guy. That one's got my attention. I totally am. The Xenoblade Chronicles announced the DLC, that really surprised me. Because it, it, it feels like it... 
with DLC, there's there, it feels like there's kind of an unspoken window between a game's release and when you can expect a company to put out DLC. And I feel like with Xenoblade Chronicles, we're really way outside that window. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of wondering if sometime in the next year or so we're going to hear an announcement that there's a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 or an X2 in the works, that maybe they're putting this DLC out as kind of a, an appetizer to, take the, to, to keep the fan base energized. There's there's a lot of speculation that within the next six months there's going to be another game announced. So they also announced a new Fire Emblem, which I might pick this one up. I've never been a I've never been a Fire Emblem fan, um, but I picked up Warriors and I got in, I got really into the world. So I might actually pick this one up. I'm 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 interested in in, in getting into the Fire Emblem series. So this might be my jumping in point. Same here. I'm kind of curious about it. this one. Made it look interesting. So I'm like I'm like all right. You know what? That looks cool. They also talked a little bit about. I want to say they talked about Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah, I want to say. Um, so that's a thing. Um, they also. Now, oh, sorry, Billy. Go ahead. Now they also. Um, announced, I want to touch a bit on the Nindy front. Uh, Octopath Traveler. Uh, that was uh, something that they showed off in their conference this year, and I am like really stoked about that. That game looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, another one that I'm really. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I forgot a thing from earlier. Uh, the the Zelda alike with the tiny fox. Oh, uh, the uh, one for Microsoft. I can't think tunic, of the name. Tunic. Of it. tunic. Is that the name? Yeah, yeah, Tunic, yeah. It looks so cute. <laughs> I'm fine. It's got my attention. I'm uh, I'm curious about it. Okay. Um and then the we have a, I think it was called I think it's called Hollow Hollow Knight, uh, which I'm really excited for. Um, that looked interesting. I'm not sure it, quite what to wake of it, but it looked interesting. There was, however, an absence in the Nintendo uh, show that I thought was really kind of worrying uh, slash telling, and that's that they didn't talk anything about the new Yoshi game, which kind of surprises me because Nintendo has kind of kept up this momentum of having you know its first party releases and, ha- and you know having a, a major one every single month. And the fact that we didn't hear anything about Yoshi at E3 when it's been kind of talked about in past directs, uh, I don't know if maybe they just didn't have enough time because of the whole Smash explosion, but I was kind of a little disappointed that we didn't see anything about the new Yoshi title this E3. I can't say that I'm bummed out. I can't say that I really care, but Nintendo knew their strategy going in. My, my guess is if you want to hear Yoshi news, wait until the next Nintendo Direct. Yeah, which, I, which which that's probably when they'll talk about it more. Um, now there was one new game that they talked about this this E3 that I'm really jazzed for, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it was that the Mech Machinima Combat game? one. Oh, no, it was D- Damon X Machinima or something. Yeah, D- D- Damon X Machina. That's it. Yeah, that is that has got uh, that's got my eyebrows raised. I'm going to be paying very close attention to that in the coming months because that looked awesome. One thing Nintendo spent a good time amount on, especially in their Nintendo Treehouse, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. They also announced that uh, the E3, or er, er, exclusively, well, Mew's available in the Pokeball. And before we go any further, because uh, I know that I'm going to get called on this, because in the previous Ask a Geek, I uh, I put two dollars on SunUp that we were going to that, that you know we were going to hear about a Pokemon title. I still technically was right. We didn't hear about a core title, but we did hear about a major Pokemon release. So I, for the purposes of that bet, I do say that I was correct for that for that call. That's so true because they did release a lot more info on it. Yeah. So that- fair enough. Yeah, it's not the next core series game, which I was a little bummed out by, but it's definitely one uh, that I'm interested in looking into, um, partly because I'm just the lore for the Kanto games, because I love uh, the Gen 1, Gen 2 uh, storylines, but also because I'm interested to see, isn't this one going to tie into Pokemon Go in some major way? Yes, you, you can trade back and forth between Pokemon Go. You can bring your Pokemon from... Let's go in the go and vice versa. Yeah, and you can kind of walk around with them. What's really funny is a lot of uh, um, Sega geeks, uh, especially the guys on Radio Sega, were having fun with, with comparing it to the uh, the Chow 
thing that you could do on the BMUs. Yep, I remember yeah. those. <laughs> and people were saying, like, well done, Nintendo, you successfully reinvented a concept that, the, uh, that Sega came up with in 2001. <laughs> and, on, and on the note of, uh, of the Pokeball, uh, can I just say that I had to scramble to get my pre-orders in on a bunch of the, the, the extra stuff that Nintendo's putting out, because in addition to the Pokeball for Let's Go Pikachu, they're also re-releasing the Smash Brothers Edition GameCube controller and the GameCube controller adapter for the Switch uh, this December, which I've already got several pre-orders in on all of those because let me tell you, come December of next of 2019, you're not going to be able to find those things anywhere. Those are going to be some hot collectors. I, I, I've already had a couple of um, messages from my friends being like, Skyblaze, have you still got some uh, GameCube controllers? I'm like, yes, and you can't have them. They are mine. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so I if there's if there's one thing that uh, one way it, Nintendo has really appealed to me in two ways with their uh, showing this year. First, as a gamer because hey, they're bringing back Smash, and also as a collector because it's like okay, here's the stuff that's going to be you know hot ticket items in the next couple of years. I'm like yes, more. So we're kind of we've kind of gone through uh, the whole uh, E3 conference here. So let's we, kind of start. We, by- didn't, we didn't talk about the Volvo Digital. Oh, we didn't. Oh well, then yeah. uh, the floor is yours. I don't know what to say and I don't know what to make of Devolver Digital because We're bearing crazy. in mind that when the the conference their conference was going on it was 4 a.m. for me so I was like is is any of this real is is this really happening what's going on I actually tweeted at Devolver Digital because they said on their Twitter watch RoboCop before you watch this conference and I said to them, look, if you give me a RoboCop game, I will pleasure you in ways that man cannot yet describe with human language. <laughs> and I will stick by this. If they give me a RoboCop game, I don't care man, woman, monkey. <laughs> I got to keep my word, man. You gave me RoboCop. I'm down. I don't care. <laughs> but Buy they a had ticket that... to their offices immediately. Oh, and then they showed off that insane mech game. Metal Wolf Chaos. That looks insane. I must own it. And uh, it, like, it was PS One era, wasn't it? The original. I think PS Two, but yeah, it, it was fairly PS2. early generation. Yeah. But yeah, it looks wonderfully weird. Defend the White House yep. from robots. Let me see. Okay. Because, shut up. That's why the the kind of general tone of it is very Saints Row in ways. One of the things that was also talked about on Twitter is they had hats. They instead of it's, instead of make America great again, it was mech America great again. Yeah. I uh, thought that would have been clever yeah. as hell to see. You were both uh, wrong. It was Xbox Metal Wolf Xbox. Chaos. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But still, it's badass. It was a. Uh, it, yeah. was a it was a. Uh, it was an Xbox exclusive that. Uh, if I remember correctly, I believe was only released in, Japan. in Europe. Yeah, that's probably why I've heard of it then. Um, but yeah, the, it was so bizarre watching the Devolver Digital press conference and trying to figure out what the hell was going was going on. The bit with the uh, when they were throwing shade on the concept loot box of mini. Coin? Oh yeah, the loot box point. I was saying <laughs> myself. Considering I've had to write articles about um, cryptocurrency and blockchain and all this sort of stuff, it was so funny. Uh, and then they, they did that bit with the. This is just a Dreamcast. <laughs> wow. And I love that they throw that kind of shade on the rest of the industry because nobody else seems to dare to do it. <laughs> okay. And now, uh, Skyblaze, you have somewhat of a unique position working for a, a VR publication. So, did you see anything cool in the, the VR circle this E3? You know, from software that made Dark Souls. And also originally made Metal Wolf Chaos, coincidentally, yes. Yeah. They're doing a VR game. They're first. It's called Deracine. And it is weird. Uh, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it properly because it's D E R A C I with an accent, N E with an accent. How the hell do you pronounce that? I don't bloody know, because I'm British and therefore pronouncing other things in uh, pronouncing things properly is for fusses. Um, 
it looks beautiful, but it looks so strange. Uh, the the trailer was bizarre. It had like this weird sepia toned uh, Victoriana feel, and this British accented voice talking about you're going to become a fairy. And then there was a, a, a flower randomly gets colorized in the middle of the sepia tone thing and blooms. And you, what's this about? I don't know, but it looks fascinating. Um, and I, I, I want to know more about this. You have my attention from software. Please explain. Uh, what else was there? Pull up my work record because I can't actually remember because it's all gone blurry. Um, oh, one thing that wasn't, it wasn't announced for any of the big ones, but there's a, basically think spiritual successor to Echo the Dolphin. It's called Jupiter and Mars, and it's coming out for the PlayStation VR. It looks beautiful. I mean, mind-bogglingly gorgeous. Uh, and, uh, follows the same kind of idea as Echo the Dolphin. You know, you have to save, you know, save the world from horrendous things. I will put it in the chat. There we go. But yeah, it looks amazing, so that's that's worth checking out if uh, for, for those who are interested in such things. Uh, Wolfenstein Cyberpilot. Uh, there is footage kicking around for that, and that looks really awesome. Uh, oh, Moss is coming out on... Uh, oh, is out on the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. That was announced just before E3. Uh, Moss, if you don't know, stars an adorable little mouse and is the cutest thing you have ever seen, oh my god. So yeah, that's worth checking out. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, I can hear tippity tappity type tippity. Oh, there's, there's rumours kicking around that the PlayStation VR 2 is coming along. Um, oh yeah, uh, uh, Ghost Giant, which is looks quite cute. Uh, uh, Zoink, Zoink Games, who are working on that one. It's another PlayStation VR title. Uh, along the same kind of lines of, as Moss, um, where you're, the player is, is a giant who helps out the, the in-game characters using your giant hand. It look, that looks quite cute. All right. So we're kind of running uh, short on time here, so let's start wrapping things up. So what uh, what are your guys' final thoughts on uh, on this E3? So uh, for, so Birdman, let's start with you. I almost called I, you Brian. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I actually thought this was a fairly good show. A lot of games were showing off, although looking at Holiday for Xbox, I'm not too optimistic for them. They're just treading water until they have basically Halo and Gears 5 come out. But overall, I, I, I was pr- pretty impressed from most of the companies. Smash is going to be awesome. Resident Evil 2 is going to be awesome. And you got my attention with Kingdom Hearts. And let's hope uh, Fallout 76 is a complete dog crap. All right. St- Skyblaze? Uh, I still maintain that there, there were a lot of kind of okay shows but there were some standouts and there were some players there there's plenty to be interested in um yeah i i the biggest one for me is still kingdom hearts 3 i'm sorry but yeah i know where my heart lies <laughs> all right well uh for me this show uh based on everything i saw it seemed to be one of those things where the the product is really great, but the salesmen were terrible because a lot of the games that were tried out really great, a lot of stuff to get really excited about, but the presentation really suffered uh, this year, and uh, I'd like to kind of see that balance restored. But you know, like I like me and Brian said last year, and I'll say it again this year. To uh, to me, E three is all about the games, and I saw a lot to be really be excited about this year. So I suppose the last question is, what were your top three? things that got you most excited this year e3 so birdman what, what what's your top three resident evil 2 shadow of the tomb raider and probably um this one will surprise you we happy few all right i think it looks cool well uh it's been out on early access for months so you can actually pick it up now i want a bug free version damn it <laughs> all right skyblaze what about you top three 
Um, Spider Man, because that looks amazing. Uh, oh, we didn't mention Death Stranding. We're probably going to get crucified for that. Just oh, so. whoops. <laughs> it's Kojima. He's weird. We'll get it when we know yeah. more. Yeah, it's like there was a trailer. I don't know what it means. <laughs> um, there was a well, baby on his chest. It, I don't know what it, it means. It ended, and it's like, well, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Kingdom Hearts Three. I'm still excited. I know the the release date's been pushed back, but I'm still excited. Uh, yeah, Spider Man. Yeah, Devil May Cry Five. I'll give that a chance. Cyberpunk 2077 uh, looks great. Alright, well, yeah, that's technically, that was, that's technically four, but okay. Alright, so uh, for me, top three Doom Eternal, really looking forward to that. Resident Evil 2, oh my god, that's going to be just so amazing. And of course, Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, I'm basically just going to be disappearing. Uh, over over the December holiday, that's going to be it. You're not uh, you're not going to see hide nor hair for me uh, in December and January. If I've not resurfaced by February, please send a rescue team. <laughs> and that's all the time that we have for Nerd to the Third Power this week, Mike. As always, we want to thank you for joining us on the show. So, uh, we, as is our agreement, uh, we want to give you a chance to plug what you're doing. So, uh, why don't you tell uh, our listeners here where they can find you, what kind of craziness you're going to be up to in the in the coming months. All right, cool. Well, as always, you can find me at thisweekingeek.net. New, hot, and fresh shows every single Sunday and Monday. We also, you can find me on terriblewarriors.com, the roleplay podcast, where we check out new and different RPG systems each and every single month. And I run the Cambridge Chronicles, which is whatever the hell I feel like playing. It could be Marvel TSR from the 1980s. It could be Cyberpunk 2020. It could be Star Wars West End games. You never know what you're going to find. That's at Terrible Warriors. Dot com slash Cambridge Chronicles and you can find me on Twitter at Birdman Dodd, Instagram and Facebook at the same thing. So that's where you can find me. All right. And that's all the time that we have for Nerd of the Third Power this week. Next week, it's been out for a week now. We've watched it. We've loved it. Voltron Legendary Defender Season 6 is our discussion topic next week. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I'm Dr. Gonzo. I'm Skyblaze. I'm Mike. We'll see you next week. Taka, play us out. Did a, did a boss battle just occur somewhere? Sorry, that's my wife's phone. Okay. <laughs> Random uh, battle. When you call 811 before you start a digging project to mark underground infrastructure, you're not just making sure that your dig site is safe. You're making sure that your neighborhood's lights will stay on and that you're preventing gas leaks. Because when you ensure that your digging won't interfere with any of Orange and Rockland's underground gas and electric lines, you're ensuring safety for yourself and your community. Call 811 before you dig, not 911 after. It's the law. Learn more at ORU.com slash 811. Orange and Rockland. Everything matters. Geico presents oh, yet another voicemail from your roommate. Hi. So about the kitchen. Turns out, when there's a grease fire, you're not supposed to throw water on it. <laughs> Who would have known, right? Anyways, the fire department is here, and it's totally cool. Give me a call back when you get a chance. The Geico Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected, like if danger is your roommate's middle name. Visit geico.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance.